In this episode of Restore It, I restore this right hand drive E30 dashboard that Fran, a subscriber of the channel, found for sale local to me and then kindly sent me the link. In Spain, the second hand car market isn't as cheap as the UK's, so some people will buy cheaper E30s in the UK, import them into Spain and swap the dashes over to convert them to left hand drive. This means every now and again you'll get an unwanted right hand drive dashboard for sale at a great price. I picked this one up for €150, Euros, not far from where I live, which is an absolute bargain for a crackless right hand drive dash as I've seen some for sale on eBay for five or six hundred pounds. As you can see there are no cracks to be seen in the usual spots unlike on both of my dashes from my E30s. So this is the dashboard from the Sport and here are the two cracks in it right at the usual spots. Now I haven't seen a repair job I'd be happy with for a concourse restoration, so that's why I'm swapping it out for a crackless one. So on to the restoration. As always, I firstly dismantled everything from the main body. It turns out this dashboard was made in 1990, and the one from the Sport was made in 1987, the same year the car was made. Maybe that's why it's crackless, and maybe in three years it will be cracked.
So these are all the parts that came from this dashboard. Some of them are missing, but I'll get to them in a future reassembly episode. At this point of any restoration, it can seem a daunting task to have to rebuild something that which, let's be honest, was quite easy to take apart, but not as easy to put back together again. This is where eManual Online come in with their factory style workshop repair manuals, used by the likes of BMW technicians at the dealerships. These manuals contain step-by-step -step instructions with pictures, diagrams and torque specs covering everything you need to know about a particular vehicle. They also inform you of any special tooling you might need to get the job done, and also how to use that special tooling the correct way. These manuals will show you how to carry out pretty much any job on your car, truck or motorcycle, and what's great about eManual Online is that it's hard to find a vehicle they don't have a manual for, and they do more than just vehicles. So to check them out, click the link at the top of the description. These things are usually around 20 bucks, but I have a 30% discount code, especially for Restore It viewers, which you can apply to your entire order at checkout. You can download all of your manuals onto your computer or smartphone and have them for the rest of your wrenching days. It's invaluable information that will save you a ton of money and give you the knowledge and confidence to start or finish your restoration project. So big thanks to eManual Online for the 30% discount. Let's get back to the dashboard. Obviously, the next thing to do was wash off what I can only assume was Spain from pretty much every single piece that came from the dashboard. It was completely covered in this sandy dirt inside and out. When comparing the old one to this one, it appeared that this clip was only used on the newer models, as the foam hadn't been cut on my old one. I do wonder if the metal is under there on the older model. Before I cleaned the dash with chemicals, I gave it a good brush vacuum to remove as much loose dirt as possible. Then, as a first proper clean, I used Auto Glim Interior Cleaner and a microfiber towel to scrub off any stubborn dirt. Once it was clean, you could see just how faded it was. It's not too bad, but we'll see how well the method I've chosen to restore it works later on. Along the sides of the dashboard are these two metal mounting plates which were both covered in rust. I masked off the area around them and used a roll up finishing pad and a rotary tool to remove that rust. There are a few other spots that had very light surface rust on them, which are removed with a smaller rotary tool and still wire bits. With pretty much all of it gone, I used a chemical converter to convert any leftover rust into a ready to paint surface. Whilst that was doing its thing for 3 hours, I drilled the rivets on these mounts because I noticed some rust underneath them, and I actually forgot to remove them during the disassembly, but better late than never.
With the rust gone, I gave them the same treatment as before and left them 3 hours to dry. Whilst waiting for that, I removed the rust from the mounts themselves along with one that sits above the glove box. Next on the list was the loom. It had seen much better days and was in need of a rewrap and a clean which was exactly what I did with some contact cleaner and some Tessa loom tape. With the loom ready to go and the rust converter dry, I set about gluing the metal plates back to the foam using a strong two pack adhesive. I'm looking for the sprayable foam that apparently these dashboards are made from so I can fill in a few areas including this one. If anyone has any information on either the sprayable foam or sheets of the stuff, please do leave it down in the comments. As that was going to take some time to set, I zinc plated the few parts that needed it. This was one of the first restorations I've done where most of the zinc plated parts have held up well enough to not need restoring. After the zinc plating was done with, I could then remove these clamps as the adhesive had set enough and paint over the rust converter with quartz deep black paint.
Not long after I had finished the big bits were the small bits ready to paint. So this is just one last look at the dashboard before I gave it a clean with quartz silicone remover in preparation for the renewing solution. I am going to try a 50-50 mixture of boiled linseed oil and paint thinner to restore the vibrancy of the dashboard and plastics as well as add a layer of protection to both. If you're wondering, the thinner is used to help dry it off a lot faster than it would without it. I rubbed it in for about 15 minutes before leaving it to absorb for a few and then wiped off the excess with a dry towel. It was so satisfying to see this dashboard slowly come back to life. I was quite impressed with how it turned out. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a huge difference nonetheless. This solution, however, isn't permanent and will need repeating down the line again and again. So I just wanted to ask you guys if you know about any dashboard paints or dyes that exist and if you had any experience using such a thing. If they do exist, please do share them down in the comments with me. Whilst the dashboard was drying, I used the same solution on all of the plastic parts, which again made a big difference. The two foam strips that run down the sides of the dash were completely perished and needed replacing. I didn't check to see if these were replaceable, I just decided to make my own. The middle vent had some foam wrapped around the area where it joins to the rest of the system, which was also in need of replacing. Luckily, I had a load of foam left over from the HVAC restoration that's the correct thickness for the job. But firstly, I had to remove the old stuff, and my god was it stuck on there good. After a lot of scraping, I remembered that chemicals exist, and grabbed a sticker remover which made much lighter work of it. With all of the old stuff gone, I cut the new piece and decided to use an instant contact adhesive, as I'm pretty sure that's what they did in the factory. It got a bit messy shortly after I sprayed contact adhesive everywhere, but with a bit of faffing I got there in the end. I applied the renewing solution to both the air vents and they were looking great apart from the white markers and numbers, which were in need of brightening up. I used some traffic white 2 pack paint for the job. I screwed it up a few times, so I cut my brush down to make it more precise and kept trying until I got it just right. I'm glad I caught these at the last minute, the fresh white paint really makes them pop. As I'm editing this now, I just realised I didn't do the middle air vent as well. I'll do that in a future episode before the dash gets installed. And there we have it, everything restored with nothing replaced apart from the rivets. 
I'll probably replace a few of the front pieces with new ones when I start the build series, but we'll cross that expensive bridge when we get there. I was shocked at these screws not needing any work, but I guess that's interior parts for you. I haven't restored this yet, but I wanted to add the clocks to give you a better feel of what it's going to be like when it's installed. And so the only thing left to do was to rebuild it.
And there it is, looking much better than it did before, but there's still room for improvement and I'm really interested to see if repainting or dyeing this dashboard is possible and I'd be happy to film the process if anyone can recommend a solid product that does the job. The same goes for the yellow phone. Overall though, I'm pretty pleased with how this came out. I have my first non-crack dash in the bag and now a spare one to try a dashboard crack repair on, something I'm sure I'll make a video on in the future. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.